Under the rules of the court, you are directed on how to format your motions, the time frames in, the time frames in which you have to respond to motions, how to format your exhibits, and the procedure for delivery of papers you file with the court. Because the rules are amended from time to time, procedural rules are not quoted in this tutorial to any great extent. You are encouraged to inform yourself or to at least seek a legal consultation so that you are informed as to your legal rights and obligations. Generally speaking, your motion and or opposition should not be longer than 30 pages. If you are using forms from the Self-Help Center or downloading them from the Clark County website, it is important to remember that the judge wants to know why you are coming into court and what relief you are asking the court to grant to you. There are blank lines in this, these self-help forms where you can fill in exactly what you want, why you want it, and the proof you are offering to substantiate your claims. Your belief that something is happening in and of itself is not proof. If you believe that you have documentary evidence you want the judge to see, these are typically referred to as exhibits that you attach to your motion or opposition. The exhibits should be attached at the end of your motion or opposition. You should number in the lower right hand side the each exhibit as Exhibit 1, Exhibit 2, etc. If there are multiple pages in the exhibit, each page should be numbered sequentially. This makes it easy for everyone to refer to when in the courtroom and especially avoids frustrating a busy judge when you are attempting to direct the judge to a specific location in your exhibit that you feel is important. On the issue of exhibits, this tutorial will not attempt to limit what you submit as an exhibit. Each judge, judge takes a different view as to what is acceptable in regards to exhibits attached to your motion or opposition. In fact, each judge has the discretion to strike any exhibits that you attach to the papers you file with the court. You may wish to consult with an attorney as to which exhibits will be considered as having evidentiary value for the court. You may also ask uh, the attorney as to the manner in which the document should be presented to the court as it relates to the specific judge. If documents are subpoenaed and presented as exhibits, be sure to include the custodian of records affidavit with your exhibits, which signals to the court where the documents came from and lends authenticity to the documents. If you are using emails or text messages as exhibits, the better practice is to include the stream of messages and not just pick one message that you believe bolsters your case. The court will be interested in what came before and after the text or email, and if you don't provide the complete history, rest assured that you're, the opposing party will do so. You need to remember that every paper you file with the court needs to be delivered to the other party well in advance of the hearing. You have a duty to provide the papers you file with the court to the other party and file a certificate of mailing with the clerk's office which establishes when you mailed the papers and the address you used for mailing purposes. Note that U.S. mail is an accepted form of mail and delivery unless otherwise specifically ordered by the court. EDCR 5.32 requires that any motion for fees and allowances must be accompanied by a financial disclosure form. The financial disclosure form is available at the Self-Help Center or online at the Family Court website. Your last three payroll statements should be attached to your financial dis disclosure form to support your claim of income. Your failure to file this form uh, could result in your motion being denied. For example, if you fail to file a financial disclosure form, your request to reduce child support or your request for spousal support could be denied. Even if your initial motion did not request financial relief but the counter motion requests financial relief, you have a duty to file a financial disclosure form. The judge will be looking for your financial disclosure form so that appropriate orders can be made. The best practice is to file your financial disclosure form at the same time that you file your motion or your opposition. This is a required form. You may lose credibility with the court if you fail to file a financial disclosure form, if you file an incomplete financial disclosure form, or if you fail to attach the three most current payroll statements to your financial disclosure form. As this tutorial, tutorial is about putting your best foot forward, a few words on not following the rules is appropriate here. With respect to the requirement to file a financial disclosure form, you take a huge financial risk by not complying with this rule. 
the court has several options available to it to make a determination of your income if you fail to comply with the rule. The court may ask the opposing party if they have actual knowledge of your most recent income and take their sworn testimony as to their knowledge, then determine your monthly income based on that information. Or the court may take your sworn testimony as to what you last earned and base your current monthly income on your testimony even if your current income is not the same. Or the court may impute your income from the Nevada list of average industrial wages based upon your trade, which may very well be higher than your actual income. So all in all, it is in your best interest to file an accurate and complete financial disclosure form. Be sure to attach your three most current pay payroll statements there too. And also be sure to mail a copy of your financial disclosure form to the other party and file your certificate of mailing with the clerk of the court um, and make sure a copy of there too is filed and sent to the attorney if your spouse is represented by an attorney. Also be sure to file a certificate of mailing with the clerk so that the judge knows exactly that you've complied with all of these rules. Once you've been to court and the judge has made a ruling on your case, you or the other party may be directed to draft the order from the hearing. The order may need to be signed by both parties. The order should then be sent to the judge's clerk who will review it and compare the proposed order with the minutes or video from the hearing. Once the order is approved by the clerk, the order will be given to the judge for signature. This process usually takes about one week.